Hi, welcome to International Hawaii on ThinkTech, where we showcase local import and export companies and the trade industry. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And today we're chatting with Kelly Stewart of Big Island Coffee Roasters. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you for inviting me. This is exciting. <laughs> so how long have you guys been around and how did you get started? We uh, took roots in around 2010. We moved to the Big Island after we saw a farm on Craigslist and we sort of jumped at the offer. I know it's a really weird story and a lot of people have heard it now. Um, but I mean, that's the truth. We, uh, we came, in came to the Big Island anticipating that we would homestead, but we were in love with coffee. I've been in love mm. with the specialty coffee industry since 2002 and very aware of it. And Brandon um, was an organic farmer for a community source, uh, community support agriculture co-op. And so that was our, uh, our vision and our dream was to like grow our own food and process cheese and do all of that. <laughs> but we fell in love with coffee and we fell in love with growing coffee and processing it. And gradually after a couple of awards and some press, um, we realized that we could turn it into a, a small business, mm -hmm. a passion business, not really a business business, just like a passion hobby business, but it kept growing and it kept growing. <laughs> and um, so although we took root in 2010, we started really developing Big Island Coffee Roasters probably in 2013. And we didn't really know what we were doing in terms of <laughs> running a business until about 2015. We were, we were totally involved in the coffee and like doing coffee every day, but you know, we'd never take, we didn't know how to keep books. We didn't, I've never taken a marketing class um, mm. we were doing what we were doing. And then around 2015 um, is when it really started uh, developing. That is amazing. And did people, I know because you've won those awards, did people start coming to you to buy or did you? Or did you have to go out and shop? Oh, no, no I've, uh, I, I am not a salesperson. Brandon <laughs> is not either. Um, they all came to us, actually. Nice. We, didn't, we didn't do any advertising or even have a sales role until within the last two years. We didn't even start advertising oh. until last year. Um, and so a lot of it came word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Referrals, press, awards, and uh, yeah, word of mouth. That is awesome. And are you guys mainly B2C or B2B? Before COVID, we were mainly, we're about 75% B2B and 25% D2C. And then during COVID, of course, that flipped. And so we had about a month where, where our uh, um, wholesale accounts, our B2B accounts just dropped and we mm. were like everybody fish out of water trying to figure out what to do. Mm -hmm. um, a few other things happened at the same time that I don't need to go into right now, but it really helped develop our uh, D to C. And oh, so cool. one month we're mostly B to B and the next month we're mostly D to C. And then I kept go the D to C kept going up. And so now we're around 75% um, D to C. Oh wow, um, so it flipped. It's totally flipped, but wholesale is coming back strong. People are coming to Hawaii. They're visiting mm. in droves. It's really exciting. We're getting a different type of visitor right now than we were pre-COVID. Um, and our, our wholesale accounts are really blowing up. Yeah, but it's, it's an exciting time. That's awesome. Are your wholesale accounts mostly in the tourism industry? Um, let me think about that. Uh, a lot of them are in the tourism industry, but we also service a lot of cafes, um, community nice. cafes, like, you know, nice. cute places are, that you know of, mm -hmm. The Curb, uh, Morning Glass, um, cafe, cafe, Coffee Shop 831, a lot of cute places around Oahu and um, in the islands. We even have a few places like in Alabama, Louisiana. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, a place you wouldn't expect. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, that's very awesome. And that's good for Hawaii and just getting absolutely getting the word out there. And yeah. I know that in the coffee community, you actually help a lot of other farmers. How did that get started? And why did you start doing that? It got started in two ways. And one, I guess you could say is a, was a little bit like, I wouldn't say selfish, but it was like, you know, <laughs> we, we were in Puna 
and nobody had heard of Puna Coffee. Mm -hmm. um, our neighbors and uh, folks in Kau and in Hamakua, Hamakua were selling their coffee to Kona um, mills and roasters, which were then counterfeiting it as Kona coffee. Oh, and they're counterfeiting it for a good reason. I mean, I understand why they, these farmers were selling it because Hamakua didn't have a name. You couldn't mm -hmm. sell Hamakua coffee online because nobody knew it. They only knew Kona. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Puna. And so on one hand, we were, we, felt the um we felt the impact on our own situation of that and on the other hand we saw um a niche in a market coming from a place where you know portland and being total foodies where we love diversity we <laughs> love varieties you give me all the obscure varieties of tomatoes and like it's just exciting it's like a discovery mm -hmm. process and mm -hmm. we didn't see that in hawaii but we as we were tasting all these coffees from around hawaii realized that that could easily develop um, and I don't know if anybody else would be interested in it, but we knew that we were interested in it. And so we began working with other coffee or farmers and bringing in their coffees and showcasing them as the authentic region, really tasting them, getting to know what the region tastes like, um, and sharing that with coffee lovers and foodies and, uh, yeah, uh, like people who really enjoy the flavor of terroir in their products mm -hmm. and like diversity in products. Mm. Nice. So that's, it sounds like you really elevated it to like wine level. It's not just your everyday coffee, but. Yeah, you know, I, I felt it was like the food foodies. It's, yeah. you know, the foodie movement. Um, <laughs> and we don't have as much of it in Hawaii as, as there are in other places, but I, but it's developing and yeah, that's what we were doing with coffee. Mm -hmm. Nice. That is awesome. And I'm sure the other farmers really appreciated, appreciated that. And was it also like to scale equipment sharing as well or? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's uh, like everything that has happened it's been an organic process mm -hmm. where we didn't have a plan it was like oh yeah like yeah I mean that makes sense let's do that let's <laughs> you know and so um we started selling out of our coffee and deciding to offer other people's coffee but then we realized that we needed more equipment and that our side of the island didn't have the equipment that we needed mm -hmm. to um, produce a higher quality coffee, one, and that other farmers needed. Mm -hmm. And so we got a grant to bring in the first uh, coffee grader on our side of the island. And at that time, we were doing a lot of milling and grading um, for other farmers and roasting, packaging, mm -hmm. um, co-packing, you know, the whole thing. And what grading does is it removes the size-related defects from coffee. And so that meant that we could produce a better uh, cup of coffee and mm -hmm. for our customers and help farmers do that for theirs, theirs as well. Very nice. And then speaking of like packaging, so you help with packaging. Do you import your packaging? Yeah, yeah. So um, we work with a local company that's fantastic called Saver Brands. I will, I will mm. promote them all day long. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're very cool. And uh, they uh, they have their packaging manufactured and shipped uh, imported to Hawaii. So we work with them. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one time, and this was a while ago. I don't remember if this was while we were working with them or not, but we did try to uh, import packaging from somewhere else and mm -hmm. it was coffee bag packaging and it was a disaster. Uh, oh, no. We got a, a pallet of five pound bags that weren't sealed very well. They were sold as five pound bags. So for coffee, mm -hmm. but, um, at five pounds, the seals would break and they would explode in transit, which is a really oh. expensive disaster to happen. You know, That's somebody crazy. orders one of the most expensive coffees in the world and they, and it arrives all over their package. So oh. we had to replace so much coffee. It was, it was, um, it's a nightmare That's horrible and uh we're still like dealing with these bags and trying to upcycle them however we can without using them for coffee packaging mm, yikes yeah and that's more of like um i guess a supplier qc 
That yeah. Is crazy. And then I also, we were also talking about how you do import raw material, like raw coffee or coffee to Hawaii as well. How do you find where you get your coffee from and how do you find those suppliers? Yeah, so um, in addition to working with coffees from all over Hawaii and bringing them in from our local farmers, we also bring in international specialty coffees from outside of Hawaii. And, and uh, we have standards with our international coffees. One, they have to be specialty grade, which means that they have to be a higher quality. Mm-hmm. Um, two, they have to be either uh, fair trade, organically grown, or Rainforest Alliance certified. Wow. We want some sort of... Um, uh, like ethical promise within that coffee. Uh, we work with uh, importers on the mainland who send us samples of various coffees. Um, we sample roast and cup them and then we bring them in. We roast them and then those typically go to hotels, cafes, and uh, resorts where Hawaiian coffee isn't the main item. It is the add-on item that you can purchase. Got it. So you don't actually work directly with the international coffee growers. You work with like a mainland company that brings them in for you. Yeah, we had the opportunity to work with some mainland coffee growers, but there's there are a lot of logistical issues that happen when, like for instance, um, there's a there's a producer I would absolutely love to work with in El Salvador. She has one of the best espressos I've ever had in my life was her single <laughs> origin coffee was really good and um I would love to import her coffee but there are all kinds of logistical issues that that um get in the way of importing that happen in El Salvador permits that you need licenses that you need and then of course it needs to go on a barge um and usually it goes to the main like a port in California mm-hmm. and then it's shipped over Mm, and it was just so we just much. were not prepared to do that <laughs> I wish we were yeah that's too bad I mean it's, it's challenging just being here in the middle of the ocean to actually bring yeah. things in yeah mm, that is tough what is um so you say you haven't marketed too much what do you think is the most effective way that you've been finding new customers mm. well we didn't start marketing until last year. And so Mm -hmm. now we're marketing a lot more. Um, The most effective way that we have, oh, we've grown in a few different ways. Um, Of course, referrals and being in the locations where people walk by, you know, of course, like the airports and Whole Mm. Foods, and they can take a bag of coffee home and then look us up. That's, of course, uh, very effective. Um... We also do a lot of partnerships and partnerships work out really well when you can align yourself with another local company and um, do some type of collaboration together. Oh, great. Like other manufacturers or like restaurants? Other manufacturers or, or even like Hawaiian Airlines. We like, for instance, uh, Hawaiian Airlines and Mana Up, uh, will, they will be visiting us next week and we're going to do a uh, live event with them and some uh, uh, brewing um, 101, some uh, brewing tips, take them through the farm. And so that is something I would call a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Um, It's beneficial for Hawaiian Airlines because they want to give their community content on what's happening in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And then of course, Mana Up supports entrepreneurs and um, Ben, we benefit from both of those. And I <laughs> hope that we provide as much as we get. <laughs> That's awesome. And is this like content that Hawaiian Airlines would share on flights? Is that? They do of- share some content on flights. And I know that um, Mana Up has some content uh, on, on uh, some of their flights. I'm not sure if it's still there, but yeah, mm. you have to ask them. I know it's on their blogs and I know I'm, Pretty sure it's in Hanahel. <laughs> that was awesome, and I'm I'm excited because I I registered to attend, and you mentioned that you oh, cool. yeah that you aren't starting tours yet, and so I think this would be an awesome way to just get the virtual tour. Yeah, yeah, of your place, which is awesome. So I think that's really good. Um, I was going to ask. I guess during the pandemic, you mentioned that your your customers kind of flipped. Like, did you have to change anything internally with your business? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, we had to bring in more customer support for, for um, those D2C customers that have small questions mm -hmm. that are really, you know, uh, quick, like for instance, having a chat bot, we have a chat bot on our website. Nice. Um, wholesale customers generally don't care about that. They'll send an email and wait a couple of days. D to C, it's nice to have an immediate answer. We also decided during the pandemic, um, it really felt like human touch was missing because mm -hmm. nobody could touch each other. Nobody was going outside. And so we hired somebody to start writing uh, little postcards and slipping them in uh, the packages of coffee. Nice. Say like, have a great day, reach out if you need anything. And so uh, we went from having a support team to sample products and to service our wholesale customers to having a support team to really nurture our um, D2C customers and let them know that we really do care and that there are people behind these products. Mm. It's not like, it's not Amazon. This mm -hmm. is really a... a artisan business um, with people who live in Hawaii behind the scenes. Oh, that's a nice touch. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and then I guess, do you have plans to scale? Like, so your business has flipped, but has it actually grown since, I guess, since 2019 and throughout? Since 2019, it's probably, let's see. 3x in total wow yeah it's awesome. been, yeah yeah and we're at a we're at a, um we're bursting at the seams so yeah <laughs> we are we're we're growing we have plans to grow and we are um we're in a i, I guess it would be like a a point in which we need to make a decision really quickly about this holiday season because mm. uh, last even last holiday season we were getting really close to capacity um oh. and this holiday season we're going to have to strategize with doing a couple of extra shifts and uh meanwhile we're procuring new equipment and we're uh, looking at a lease for a new place and so yeah we are looking at uh locations that we can really grow into for the next decade that is awesome. Very cool. We are going to take a quick break. This is International Hawaii, and I'm speaking with Kelly Stewart from Big Island Coffee Roasters on Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Mitch Ewan, host of Hawaii, the state of clean energy on Think Tech Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy is about following the many clean energy initiatives in Hawaii. Hawaii, the state of clean energy appears weekly on Think Tech Hawaii at 4 p.m. on Wednesdays. Thank you so much for watching our show. We'll see you then, aloha. Welcome back. This is International Hawaii. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And today we are talking to Kelly Stewart of Big Island Coffee Roasters. And she, it sounds like she's running an awesome, successful small business that's growing rapidly. And so I wanted to ask you about some of the challenge that, challenges that you're facing in, I guess, starting and growing in Hawaii and on the Big Island too. Like what, yeah. are, what are some of your bigger challenges? Um, in terms of products, um, we don't have much for resources here mm -hmm. and it's quite expensive to get things shipped in and to mm -hmm. get things imported. That's a challenge that we all face throughout Hawaii, um, more so on the outer islands because Honolulu does have a little bit more in terms of resources. Mm -hmm. And so not only do you have the issue of the expense of importing and exporting and shipping, but also the, 
there's less awareness of the options that exist, hmm. if that makes sense. And I would, I'd say that leads into a big issue that we have in the Outer Islands, especially, and one that we've been, you know, tackling as we grow, which is just network. Um, network, mentorship, uh, uh, mm. being surrounded with people like us who have the same issues and the same solutions. One of the nice things about being in a small business community is that it's almost therapeutic in that you're dealing with these challenges and they're very real challenges because mm -hmm. they have to do with your employees. They have to do with your customers mm -hmm. and um, the products that you ship and your ability to grow and the money that you invested into something. Um, and when you're dealing with, uh, when you have, a, when you have a network of other, um, businesses that are facing the same struggles, mm -hmm. it's almost therapeutic just to talk about it and to figure out those solutions together. Whereas like you can do that a lot easier on the mainland when you have a bigger community and mm. you can't do that quite as easily when in, on the outer islands, especially Mana Up has been really helpful with that. Mm -hmm. But I guess in this community, you have people that would face this similar challenges. I guess I'm being on this island. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. And and that's exactly why the communities on this island are so important. Is because like you can't really go to somebody in California. Like we do definitely have mentors in other places that that we can talk to about distribution. Um, mm. But but they don't know anything about the challenges that we face here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Community mm -hmm. is so important here. It is so important. Mm. That's awesome. I was going to say Patrick from Saber Brands. He would be an awesome resource because I don't know. I That's don't even know. That's import how... from. That's what I was good. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, I love him. He has built, it sounds like an amazing, amazing distribution, like yeah. just his supply chain. Yeah. So I think. I love yeah. watching them grow. I mean, it's like <laughs> very exciting um, because we're all, we all started, there are many of us that started the same place several years ago. Oh, no. And I remember seeing Patrick at a, at a <laughs> great show and it was like just a couple of people in the company. And now I think he's got like 30 or 40 and they're developing new products all the time. Um, mm -hmm. It's just awesome. It's like watching your family grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he used to be a tenant here at the Foreign Trade Zone and he just got too big. He got too yeah. big for us which is yeah. good, which is the goal. But yeah, I mean, just, I think having someone like that to help you build your supply chain so that you don't have to do it right is, is a big help, yeah. especially for yeah. small businesses. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, as far as like your tour for next week, do you, do you know where we can get information about that for people that do want to join? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can go on our Instagram page, uh, I'm on Up's Instagram page. Uh, that would be probably the easiest place to look immediately. Uh, you can also go find it, more information on uh, Mana Up's website, but it might be a little tricky to navigate to the point. <laughs> I think the easiest thing to do would be to go to one of our Instagram pages and then just follow mm. the directions. Sign up for the virtual tour. It's going to be on Facebook. It's going to be Facebook Live. Um, there's a package of three coffees. That you can take with you what we're going to do is take you behind the scenes um, into coffee processing and what that looks like and how it's so it's vastly different from coffee producer or coffee roasters on the mainland so huh. this is what makes hawaiian coffee special this is what makes the experience that you're getting so much fresher and more oh, interesting that sounds awesome um, I'm looking forward to that. And yeah it's 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 fun uh and then <laughs> we're going to take you through a tasting of all three coffees <gasps> Very cool. I think I'm going to have to do that. <laughs> and then um, one other thing I like to ask companies that I interview is what advice would you give to somebody that is starting a business? And I know it's kind of interesting because it started out as like a passion project and kind of morphed into a business. So what would you recommend to somebody thinking about starting a business? I would recommend asking a lot of questions to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't mean taking everybody's advice um but this will sound funny but don't get too confident because you can't mm -hmm. learn anything if you're too confident mm -hmm. um ask get advice 
weigh your options, find somebody that you trust uh, to help guide you. Mm, very cool. And would you recommend someone getting into farming? Oh, well, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, I would. Yeah, <laughs> I would. But uh, acknowledging that it's a big decision. It's a lot of work. Um, mm -hmm. It is uh, rewarding and it's fulfilling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, it sounds like it's something that you do have to be passionate about, like just to just to keep going. Either passionate or strategic. Mm. I would actually say passionate and strategic because mm -hmm. it's, you can you see a lot of like not so strategic farmers out there, um, <laughs> and 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 they're uh, maybe working harder than they need to. Yeah, because I read a lot about how just how challenging it is to be in agriculture in Hawaii. Yeah, Maybe. yeah, and it's especially it's, challenging for sure. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's very challenging. Um, it's, it's again, there's not the kind of resources that you would find in other agricultural um, communities like mm -hmm. California, even mm -hmm. things like cold storage, um, mm -hmm. or even enough lumber to build facilities. I have a we know a, a farmer in, in Kona who there wasn't enough lumber in the home depots on the oh island to build what he needed to build wow that's crazy yeah that's, <laughs> that's a unique challenge to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it is and so we we very much appreciate any like financial grants i think all the farmers do any like support grant mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. things like low interest loans um education all of that is really appreciated that's awesome. And one last question. Since you are on the Big Island, where would you recommend to eat? Or what is your favorite place to go to eat? Oh, <laughs> I, you know, my favorite place right now is Temple. It's this, it's a cute little place with uh, like uh, poo poos and appetizers. Nice. And um, it's very, it's almost like an LA style, a Portland style in how intimate it is, uh, the design and the food. Yeah, I really like it. Temple. Okay, I'm going to write that down. <laughs> yeah. Next time I visit. Okay, I think we're going to leave it here. Thank you so much. You've been watching International Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii. And we've been chatting with Kelly Stewart of Big Island Coffee Roasters. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me, Kelly. Thank Cindy. you. <laughs> and thank you so much to our viewers for tuning in. I'm Cindy Matsuki, and we'll be back in two weeks with another edition of International Hawaii. We'll see you next time.